Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Now, YouTube Nation has spoken loudly to me in response to the video I made earlier today on what I consider to be an outright robbery of Richland Provotnikov's title. Right, Most of you believe that Chris Algieri won the fight. Right, People are telling me that I'm sore, etc. It's all good. Let me say I believe I have a great group of, subscri of subscribers here online. I would encourage everyone to look at the robust discussion. And keep in mind, I got more negative comments. You hear my cat booing me in the background here. I got more negative comments than positive comments, more thumbs down than thumbs up on that video. So if you want to know what hardcore fans feel about the sport, right, read the comments to that video. Right? Many people have posted their scoring, right? Many of you have Algeri winning most of the fight after the first round with the exception of the ending of the fight right most people seem to agree that Provotnikov closed out the fight strong but many people feel that Algeri just took over the fight after the first round and deserved the win others had Algeri winning the fight 114 112 now, our sport here, boxing, is different than almost every other sport, right? Because the scoring is subjective, right? Just understand, and I know many people are looking at me as someone out in the wilderness on this one, but just understand that in addition to HBO's judge and Max DeLuca, both of whom had Ruslan Provodnikov winning the fight by something like an eight-round margin. Understand that ESPN.com had Provodnikov winning the fight by four rounds. Right now, again, let's just do the math. Understand, if you take away the 10-7 round, ESPN.com had Provodnikov winning one more round than Chris Algieri, right? Include the 10-7 and the fight is not close, right? So, let's consider this a watershed moment. I'm not saying that anyone is right and anyone is wrong. That's why they have three judges in the sport. Just understand that all of us are looking at different things. One of the people who responded to the video said this fight reminded him of Hagler against Leonard because as he saw it, while Leonard landed more punches, right, Marvin Hagler landed the more meaningful punches. I thought that comment was interesting. Other people are quoting CompuBox. Again, as I've said, not all punches are created equally. Right, Richland Provodnikov is a murderous puncher. Right, Timothy Bradley talks about how it felt getting hit by Rushland Provodnikov. Mike Alvarado did not survive the fight, right? Didn't go the distance. Provodnikov is one of those fighters who, quite frankly, can dent even great chins. My point to you is it's not a flash knockdown when you hit a guy the guy hits the canvas his eye blows up how do people think Algeri's eye blew up right also if Algeri and I know many people are saying Algeri peppered Provotnikov if Algeri was so effective with the jab how come Provotnikov's face in my opinion, looks relatively unmarked. Yes, there's some redness. This is boxing. But he doesn't have an eye closed. He doesn't even have a busted lip. I mean, I'm not expecting a Larry Holmes jab, but come on. 
if Algeria is landing that many jabs, right, then wouldn't you expect the jabs, if they have any pop whatsoever, to have snapped back Provotnikov's neck and to have forced Provotnikov to change his strategy? My point, too, is as you look at the CompuBox numbers, right, if one guy is a heavy puncher, right, when a guy who's a heavy puncher is throwing a lot of power shots and he lands more than 200 punches in the fight, that tells me the other guy defensively wasn't that great, right? Chris Algieri, if he put on a clinic, after the first round, as many of you believe, right, and I understand most of the people who responded to that video are on the other side of the fence from me on the fight, and that's fair, right? But if Algieri put on the clinic, if he was such a great boxer, then why did he get hit so much? Finally, someone said, Dwyer, how could you say that Brian Vera looked good in the first fight against Chavez Jr., but yet criticize Chris Algieri here? Now, let me say, maybe my memory is faulty, but I don't recall Brian Vera hitting the deck twice in that fight. I don't recall Brian Vera getting an eye closed in that fight. I don't recall Brian Vera getting hit in as many rounds consistently like Chris Algieri was getting hit. Folks, aren't there several rounds in this fight where, as you watch the round, you thought to yourself, Ruslan Provotnikov landed the harder punches in this round. Aren't there several rounds in this fight where Algeri looks like he's starting to build momentum, then you see his head snap back. He's been hit with a bomb. Right? I understand that Provotnikov, and Andre Ward pointed this out on the telecast, has to set his feet before he throws punches. Okay, fair enough. But wasn't Algieri getting hit with the punches? Right? Now, I'll agree there are things that Provotnikov could have done differently. He certainly could have worked the body a little bit more. He's a little bit slower in the foot speed department than Miguel Cotto. He couldn't quite cut off the ring like Cotto did against Sergio Martinez. Okay, fine. But for me, the question is, did Chris Algieri, who hits the deck twice, who gets hit with more than 200 punches, and who isn't in the area code, of Provotnikov in terms of punching power, the question is whether he did enough to win the fight. Now, when is the last time, seriously, that you watched an HBO telecast and HBO's own score has the champ ahead by eight rounds and ESPN has the champ ahead by four rounds and one of the judges has the champ ahead by eight rounds in a fight in which the champ is not fighting in his hometown and you thought conclusively that the opponent with the closed eye who had hit the deck twice did enough to win the title to the point where there isn't even an outcry about a rematch. People are talking about Algieri fighting Manny Pacquiao. Didn't Algieri just take Provotnikov's title? Shouldn't Provotnikov, in a fight in which uh, credible media outlets have him winning the fight, not in a photo finish, but by several rounds. Understand, ESPN's four-round margin 
four rounds is a third of the 12 round fight right so I'll say this this isn't baseball where we can count the runs this isn't football where we can count the points or basketball where we can count the points this is boxing where we all sit around and talk about what we've seen this is boxing where we're all looking for different things many people were very impressed with Algeria's movement, timing, and jab. Right? Many people were very impressed with Algeria's boxing. Right? Andre Ward talked about how Algeria was showing different looks during the fight. In fairness to Andre Ward, two rounds before the end of the fight, he was saying on his scorecard he had Algeria winning, and this was on a telecast where the HBO score had the champ winning by a country mile. Right? So I'll agree we have a lot of differences of opinion coming from a lot of people who obviously have been in the game a very long time. In Andre Ward's case, at a championship level, he's an unbeaten fighter. He's an Olympic gold medalist. Right? He knows pro scoring. He knows amateur scoring but I'm gonna stick to what I saw all I can do is give you the view from my seat and say hey this is a great discussion I don't expect people to agree with me at all I'm just pointing out that Pavatnikov <laughs> to me seemed to be dictating the placement of the fighters in the ring I didn't see Algeri on his back foot landing big time shots. I can't name you the rounds where I thought Algeri landed bigger shots than Ruslan Provodnikov. I can't tell you when in the fight I thought Provodnikov was hurt and hanging on. I can't tell you when Provodnikov got inside that I thought Algeri was able to grab him, clinch him, turn him shorten the punches, land short punches. That's not the fight I saw. Right? I can't say when I saw Algeri on the ropes, he was landing good, clean, hard counters of the Floyd Mayweather variety. Right? Mayweather Hatton, I see Hatton run over to the ropes. Mayweather hits him with a check left hook. Ricky Hatton goes down. I didn't see any seen in this fight remotely resembling that right there's there's nothing to me that keeps Ruslan Provotnikov off of Chris Algieri you disagree with me fair enough to people stumbling on my video for the first time here on YouTube what I want them to do is to go to the comments of the pre-fight video and the post-fight video. Boxing fans are out. Boxing fans are being heard. Boxing fans are letting you know what they think, right? And I think it's a beautiful thing. Let me hear more from you. Let's keep the conversation going if you want. Since so many of you are very impressed by Chris Algieri, he seems to have struck a nerve. Let's talk about what's next for Algeri. If he fights Manny Pacquiao, and keep in mind, Algeri now is the WBO junior welterweight champion. Right? If he fights Manny Pacquiao, you have some other big names out there too. Right? Juan Manuel Marquez, Mike Alvarado. I know these guys fought at 147, but I'm sure things could be worked out. You got murderous punchers out there, other murderous punchers, Lucas Matisse. Right? Let us know what's next for Chris Algieri. Does he stand a chance against any of those fighters? Right? He's 30. He's not 22. I thought inside his game needs some work. Quite frankly, I would have liked to have seen him put a little bit more mustard into his jabs, right? Make them the kind of thing that actually 
discourages someone from getting inside. Right? I'll agree he has great feet. Let me also say, though, that you've got to beat the champ to take his title. When ESPN has the champ winning by four rounds. When HBO has the champ winning by eight rounds. When Jim Lampley on HBO says he agrees with the judge who has the champ winning by eight rounds. Can any of us say that Rushlut Bravatnikov deserved to lose his title on this fight? Let me hear some more from you. I appreciate all the comments. I know some people have roughed me up in the comments. It's all good. Am I bitter? Absolutely. <laughs> right? But I will say this. You know, I don't mind losing bets. I don't. When I feel my guy's been beaten. Right? If I thought Chris Algieri threw a masterpiece, I'd be here online Lord knows I've been here online after losses before talking about the great performance that I just saw. I didn't see that here. Also, let me say this. I know there's some comments about the crowd, right? The crowd cheering Algeri and, you know, accepting the verdict. Understand, Algeri was the guy from Long Island. Understand, Long Island hadn't had a world champion for more than 10 years. They're cheering for the hometown guy, right? I know HBO speculated that maybe the Russian population in Brighton Beach would come out and support Ruslan Provodnikov. But I got to tell you, as you watch the fight, even when Provodnikov's having big moments, right? Knocks the guy down twice. The crowd's not cheering. There isn't the kind of support for Pavotnikov at Barclays that, that there was for Chris Algieri. Also, let's not get too confused. The crowd at Barclays was less than 7,000 people. Right? If Chris Algieri was able to bring 3,000 people with him from Long Island, then there is a distinct possibility that the crowd was a pro-Chris Algieri crowd. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments, your, mo your further comments, here online in the comment section to the video for the world to see. As I like to say, you don't need to agree with me at all. I understand this is boxing. Sometimes we're going to watch the same fight and we're going to disagree. Such is the sport. Such is life. Let me hear your views. Thanks for stopping by.